Hey Floss Tube! It's Michelle Farm Girl. I'm here for what was supposed to be my week three mania update. Um, but I got distracted with Joan and the retreat stuff um, and just haven't had time to make another video. Um, retreat update. We're full! Can't believe it. It took five days. Um, and thank you to everyone who's coming. Um, I'm super excited about it. And now I can just kind of relax about it. Um, everybody's paid their deposits and, um, I can just relax about it. We can go into planning mode and make it, um, a really special retreat for those of you that are coming. So thank you very much. Um, so we do have some floss tubers coming. I want to give them all shout outs. Um, I'll post their channels below. Um, I hope I got everybody. I'm pretty sure I did. Um, if not, my sincere apologies. Um, let me know I've forgotten and I will link your channel below. Um, <clears throat> first person to respond that he wanted to go was Ginger Gerald Stitcher. And thanks, Gerald. I'm looking so forward to seeing you. Um, bring Henry because um, I'm taking him home with me. <laughs> and um, really looking forward to it. So he's our East Coaster coming all the way um, from, I believe you live in Pennsylvania. Um, I think that's, um, pretty sure that's where you live out on the East Coast. Um, then from West Coast, we have Becky, the obsessed stitcher, who is going to be flying in, which I'm super excited. Like, I wish she could bring her stash with her, but I'm sure it would take a separate airplane. Um, I would love to see her stash. <laughs> And um, then from Alaska, um, we have Jan Northern Stitcher, and I'm pretty sure she's also, I remember seeing that she was going to be going to the Floss Tube Retreat too. So the Floss Tube Retreat is first, so we'll be able to hear um, a little bit about that, which I'm really looking forward to. Then we have obviously me, and then we have Joan, queen of quite a lot. <clears throat> um, we have... Um, my girl, Michelle Garrett, Bendy Stitchy. I'm super, super looking forward to meeting you. And I have an awesome roommate for you. It's my girlfriend, Mindy. And I made she watched all your um, floss tubes. So she'll know you, but you guys are like two peas in a pod. You're going to be perfect. So no worries there. You're going to love her. Um, and then... Um, our other Minnesota floss tuber, Rachel Danowitz. Yay! I'm super excited. She got the last spot, um, which was awesome. It was like just being held for her. And I'm super excited you're coming, Rachel. We're going to talk soybeans <laughs> and agriculture. And yeah, so another, um, another really fun person that I can't wait to meet in person. And then special, special, special treat. We have um, designer Annie Belcher of Annie B's Folk Art is coming. So I'm super stoked. So thank you, Annie. She is going to, um, um, she's got some freebie charts, she said. She's going to um, make available to us. So I'm really looking forward to it. And I'm looking forward to meeting you in person, Annie. Um, and so, yeah, that's that. 30 people done. Five days. We now have an, um, over 100 people on our Facebook group, which is um, Midwest Cross Stitchers. Pretty sure. I'll put the link below. Um, please join it, even if you're not interested in going to this year's treat. Obviously, it's full. Um, but um, feel free to join if you're going to be interested in coming next year. We do hope to make it a yearly event, or um, we're also going to do maybe local and not so local, um, stitchy retreats. It's an open group. Any members can post. So feel free if you're in Iowa or South Dakota or North Dakota, um, Nebraska, any, um, states in the Midwest and you want to poach, post, um, any groups or find out, connect with stitchers in your area, you're more than welcome to. So, and, um, I have one other thing. I have a thank you, um, for Lori. <coughs> My damn dogs. Really, Sophie? <laughs> Sorry, she's throwing up in the back. She's not throwing up. She's fine. She just gagged a little. Um, Lori of Mischievous Stitches. Um, I think if you watch her channel, everybody does. Who doesn't? Come on. I will link her below as well. Um, I'm writing it down so I don't forget. Okay. Thought he was peeing on the floor. 
Um, if you watch her channel, you see she has been doing this by the bay, um, by the bay needle art is the um, designer. I love her stuff. I've actually never stitched anything, but I have a ton of stuff that I want to stitch. Um, this being one of them, this is 13th Colony Bay, and Lori was kind enough to pass her sash. Thank you, Lori. Oh my God. I looked at it. It's, it's a lot of stitching. And then after this one, which I'm going to finish by the 4th of July, I'm going to finish all three of these. Just kidding. <laughs> but after I'm done with these, then I'm going to do the Nantucket one. And I think that's five. I'm a little scared. We'll see. I think I'm going to dye some fabric for this. Kind of sky bluey. So pretty. My favorite colors are like this ocean tealy blue. Gosh, I love everything about this. I love it. Love it. So thank you, Lori. You're the best. Um, okay, and then I have lots of updates because I'm just going to go through with current. Um, I don't know. today. I think today is May 28th, 2017. It is Memorial Day. I have my husband and kids. Went to the grocery store and my daughter and my grandchildren and um their family they are on their way over so my husband's like hurry up shoot your video um we've been really busy this week we put the babies outside up on the hill we actually we put them with our bucks believe it or not um my big buck is about 300 pounds and he's super super cupcake and they all the boys up there tolerate all the babies and if I tried to put them in with my milking does, my milking does would beat the snot out of them. So I put them up with the bucks and the bucks don't care. The babies like jump on the bucks and I'm, especially on my big buck and he's just chill. So they're up there having a good time. My three dry yearling Nubians. Nubians are like the most neurotic breed of goat. Um, I don't have very many of them. There's a reason. But they, I have tried so many times to integrate them with my son and yearlings. So of different breed, same age. <laughs> and look at the terrified Nubians. Girls, come on, come on. The Nubians are the Kardashians of the goat world. Girls! Look at, they're not even eating, they're just standing there terrified. Oh my god, what is this fresh air? <laughs> Come on, girls! They're like, let us back in the barn! Ivan's worried about him. Ivan's worried about him. He doesn't like that. <laughs> Lovey, <laughs> you like it, son? <laughs> yeah. big babies. Uh, they're terrified of the Sanins, so I put them in my kid pen, and they seem to be, um, there seems to be much more of a personality match. So hopefully as they grow up with them, um, they can integrate there, and then when they freshen next year, with along with these kids, my Nubians will freshen as two-year-olds, and these kids will freshen um, most of them as yearlings, then they will be able to move into the senior doe herd, um, all together in the Nubians. They seriously, they, I put them out in the pasture because I thought that would be easier to integrate them. They stood along the fence huddling together crying and they were out there doing that for like three hours before I finally brought them in and put them in their own pen. So this they were totally good with. They're not afraid of the bucks. They um not afraid of the kids. So it all went really well and um, they're all out there. So Pretty much everybody is on pasture now and out of the barn. We picked up piggies yesterday, so I have little piglets. Um, I'll try and get pictures of them next time. I don't have any right now, and I'm going to try really hard not to edit this video. So I don't want to say I'm going to insert pictures and then not do it. Okay, so to my... What's the matter, Sophie? Come here. What? What? 
Do you need hugs? Do you need hugs? Oh, I know. Okay, can you get down now? Can you get down now? You just want to lay my lap. <laughs> okay, you can stay right here. Okay, so I'm just going to go through, um, and I have... If today is the 28th, I'm caught up, and I'll be honest. There's been a couple days where I've had to use my my overage, because now I'm even Steven. So there's been a couple days, like last night, I was so exhausted, and I spent the day driving to pick up the piglets, and then I came home, answered a bunch of um, emails, figured out the retreat stuff, and by 10.30, I was like, dead. Ugh. Okay, so anyways... Start number, let's see where we are. Okay, so this was start number 16. I've already done, my last two videos were um, starts one through 15. So number 16 is on Mill Hill Kit, um, Country Lane. I'm not fond of the perforated paper, so I'm doing it on a linen. And that's my start, not, not on anything too fancy. Just the border there and I'm stitching this on a 28 count just so that um, I think it's a 28 count natural linen oh flax yep 28 count flax and this is a Zweigart linen and just doing that so that it's the same size as the 14 count and beads will not be a problem so and these are also year of wix projects um, start number 17, also a Mill Hill kit, which is um, Snow Sled. And this one is oof, just Adorbs. Oops. Didn't get too much of it done. And this is going to turn into an ornament, so I did do it on... Um, Okay, so, and this one I am doing on um, the perforated paper because I'm just going to back it and make it an ornament. So that one. And then um, the next few days I have just a couple more starts and then I'm going to really focus on finishing. Because to be quite honest, I'm hating every new, and not hating every new start, it's just like, I'm not going to do a new start. And then I'm like, I need to follow through with it. Damn it, okay, fine, I'll do it. And then I, once I started, I love it, but I like, I just want to finish crap now. I'm kind of sick of starting it. Um, next, so this would be start number 18 is Little House Nino Works, State Fair. I, not much of a start there, just a little bit of a border. Um, and this is um, kind of a, it's kind of a sky blue, accurately. It's a little bit darker than what, it looks like baby blue, but it's not, it's there. Um, my needle minder is a um, 2015 State Fair button. When you volunteer, um, I do a lot of stuff with um, the 4-H uh, Dairy Goat program. So I volunteer, and if you volunteer, anytime you're signed up to volunteer, you get um, a button. So I've got quite a few buttons, so I just popped the pin off the back and made a needle minder out of it. I don't wear the pins, so loving that. That will be fun. I'm looking forward to getting back to that, and I think it'll be pretty quick. It's a witch oat linen, so it's kind of stiff. And... and then number... 19. Brenda Gervais, Where Hearts Rest. That one's pretty. I'm doing this. I'm not gonna, I really don't think people care as much as people think about what fabric you're doing on. on. If you do care and you want to ask me, um, fine. This is a 40 count de bloom that I'm stitching this one on. And 
most of the recommended colors. I'm switching a few, um, but that's my start. Ooh, that does look yellow, doesn't it? Okay, so very teeny tiny stitches. Um, and I made a mistake and up here and kind of see where I had to um, pull out stitches right there. Not Nothing big, um, just a few, but enough to make me annoyed trying to rip out stitches on 40 count that I put it away. And that was 19, number 20. Number 20. I actually finished this. We had a, um, there's a local group here. They have a Facebook group. Um, Minnesota Cross Stitchers, I believe it is. And they get together. I don't know if it's monthly. This is the first time Joan and I decided to go and met a few people there. That was really fun. What I found very interesting is that most of them were stitching in hand. I only saw a couple other people using key snaps. So, and then some beautiful projects. These women are seasoned stitchers and um, wow, wow, really pretty stuff. It was fun, I think, um, well, I think I might try it again. Um, so next one is his and her Thanksgiving stockings is Plum Street Samplers. And this one, so it called for like a 35 count and it makes them like itty bitty. And I wanted them bigger. So I did it on a 20, I think this is a 25 count and I did it over two. Yes, 25 count. And this is a, a flax. And I actually finished this. And, um, but I mean, the chart isn't finished because I still have to do his, but I really like this. I did, this is all the recommended threads. It's very pretty. Like that a lot. Um, the, his is much darker. You can kind of see from the pattern. It's lots of black in that one. But I think that'll be. And then it's just the perfect size stocking. I mean, I, I don't even, I think I might just back it with muslin. I'm not going to make it an actual stocking. But I just wanted it a little bit bigger because I'm going to hang it from um, my cabinet. So that one, I can't even tell you. <laughs> Stitching on 25 count over two, man. I mean, I feel like sometimes when I stitch on 40 count, I get absolutely nothing accomplished. And I probably, I mean, I really don't. It takes me a long time to stitch something on fabric that small because my eyes just don't work. I do use um, some magnification, but this was easy breezy lemon squeezy. Okay, next, which I'm not loving this. I don't know if... I mean, I said it before I heard anybody say it, but now I've heard other people confirm it about the Valdani um, floss. I don't know why. It's, I don't know. It just seems like kind of coarse. I don't love it. Um, so this is the floral wreath, and this is the, it's a bed, bed pin cushion. And that's as far as I got before I just got disgusted and put it away. I don't know why, I just, I just wasn't feeling it, so it will get finished. And, number, start number 22 was also a start and a finish. It is my, Scotty Hornbook. This, I've never seen this before. I saw it on my LNS. It was in the um, half off bin. You can see it was $9 and I got it for $4.50. Um, by Needle Made, Needle Made Designs. It's only 2011, so I would assume it's probably still available. Um, recommended uh, thread was Bel, uh, Belsois, I believe. I did it, it, the white is the recommended, I thought it was Gloriana. I did it in Gloriana. Oh yeah. 
so I didn't do any of the recommended threads, but here's my finish. It's my dookie doo-doo. My needle minder is just one I made myself. And then, um, so in the pattern, you stitched all black and then D-O-G for dog, obviously, was red. But I did D-U-K-E for Duke. I'm so clever. <laughs> I really like this. Um, I wish it was the D-U-K-E was, I used a, um, what was it? Oh, a Dinky Dyes. And the black is also a Dinky Dyes. With the black I love, I just wish the red was, um, it was very heavily modeled and it had some brown in it. So it didn't kind of show up as red as I wanted, but it still works. It's really cute. I like it a lot. So, and I'm going to finish that similar to this. I think I'm going to do do it on a horn book like this. Um, I might back it in like a plaid or something. I also, I also, I saw something that I really liked and it was on um, Joan's Instagram. Um, made by Mama Joan. She is on Instagram. And she had one that was like, a, it was mounted on a piece of wool. The stitching was like, I'm just going to back it with muslin, not use any batting or anything, and then just put it on a piece of um, felted wool. It was really pretty. I think I like that. And so that's that. Sorry, but if I don't put these away, it'll get to be a mess. A mess. Sorry about the dogs. I'm sorry if your dogs are going crazy right now listening to my dogs, because my dogs go crazy listening to your dogs. But it's this. Or Dookie has chewed all of the, um, being unsupervised, he's chewed all the shoelaces out of our shoes, so he can't be unsupervised. Just can't. So until he can be trusted, which is probably five or six years from now, he's going to have to be with me. And they just nonstop wrestle. And they just had a really good nap, so they're full of it. Okay, so the next one is Snow for Christmas. It's Brenda Gervais. This one is really cute. I am doing this. This is um, Lakeside Linen Cattail. Let's say Cattail Brown, 32 count. Um, my needlework is from um, Tanya's. Is it Tanya's sewing room on Instagram or Tanya's stitching room? Thank you, Tanya. And then this is stitched. None of it is the recommended floss because I was doing it on, um, because the original fabric was much darker. I don't know. In the red, I needed something a little bit darker. And I just used what was in my stash. Um, then the, um, the sheep here is stitched in um, merino wool. Which I'm now gonna do that for all my sheep because I feel like it's a necessity. So I really like this one. I worked on this one for two days and I really wanna get that finished. If I had to pick one designer that I could stitch for the rest of my life, it would be Little House Needleworks. One, because I love everything she designs and two, her um, patterns are like, it, there are infinite possibilities because she has so many. Second would be Dred Brenda Gervais. My two favorite, I think. For sure. Then, and my third favorite would probably be Plum Street. So, this is start number 23. Let's see here. Oops. That's not what I wanted. It is Farmstead Christmas. Love this so much. And I was watching that, or uh, not watching, I was, um, I follow, and I do have, this is my working copy, but I do have the pattern here. Um, I'm trying to keep my patterns all pristine, because I usually wreck the crap out of them. So I'm trying now to be really good about making working copies, so that I can pass the stuff on when I'm done with it instead of having to throw it out because it's so terrible. Um, so anyways, I was following, or I do follow, Priscilla Blaine on Instagram. 
I'm pretty sure, I'm almost 100% positive it was her. But she posted this pattern that she had gotten it kitted up from her LNS on um, picture this plus murky fabric. And can I tell you, so here's the fabric. It's like this super just old, like so pretty. It's like a brown and it's over dyed with black and super primitive and it's just awesome. So this is my start. And I love how the white pops on it. And this is, I wasn't too sure about this because this isn't red. Let me see. So this isn't red, it's orange. And there. So I wasn't too sure about it, but I really like it. And I love this. And this is just going to pop on that. See the house? I mean, the house is gonna look phenomenal. So I'm loving that. I'd like to really get that one finished. Okay, next is Blackbird Designs, and this is Small Token. And by small, they mean small. <laughs> And it is a small pattern. It's just a little pin key. So there's my start on that. That one's pretty cute. I like that one. Oh, sorry. So tired. That one should finish up pretty quick. And then that one is going to go inside my little... Um, a little box that I'm stitching. And next is the sampler company. I'm not going to take it out because it's impossible to get in. Brenda Keys. And this is Puritan Sampler. And this one, this one was a piece of fabric that I bought from Nicole of Nicole's Needlework. That's my start. Again, this is 40 count. Oh, and this is also, um, oh no, it's a 36 count and this is hand dyed by Nicole. And um, yeah, it's just not easy on the eyes, these smaller ones. I just can't get a lot accomplished because it takes me a long time. Um, I do love the delicate stitching though in, the, in anything that's higher than a 32 count. So I'm not complaining, I do like it. It just takes me so long, which I didn't realize until I did that one on 28 count, and I was like, what? Okay, then, oops. Oh, by the way, Nicole, you left your needle in there, so thanks for the needle. <laughs> so I'm using that one in Nicole's honor. Okay, then... Okay, next one. So I was going to start Macintosh Mill, but I I pulled it out and I'm just not committed to the Ada that's in there. I just, I don't know. It's, first of all, the kit pieces, they give you about two inches on either side and it makes me crazy. I need a little bit more than that. And actually, I think that one when I measured it was only an inch and a half and it made me crazy. So instead, I did go ahead and I started the Janlin kit. Um, I will start Macintosh Mill. It's just not going to be. Oh, and let me tell you a story about the Macintosh Mill. Um, I bought that kit two years ago. I paid an exorbitant amount of money for that on eBay. And I have Claire from uh, Pirate Stitches to thank for that because she finished it and posted it on Stitch Mania. And it was like, <gasps> wow. When she posted her finished piece after she got it framed, I... I had to have it. So I went on eBay and I'm sure there was somebody else who had seen that post on Stitch Mania who I was probably bidding against. And I won, but I paid for it. Um, so I don't know. It's so pretty though. I can't wait to do it and finish it. Oh, the other thing I wanted to say about Claire, and I'm going to put her channel below. Um, I'm going to make a note for myself so I don't forget. So she went 
to the Mirabilia retreat in um, Australia and Nora Corbett was there and she total guts I commend you Claire she asked Nora for a personal interview and she got one and she posted it on her um, floss tube her YouTube channel so I will post that link below it is even I'm not a mirror stitcher I mean you've seen what I stitch I don't stitch anything like that I do appreciate um, all of you who do stitch them because they're I mean they're gorgeous and every once in a while I'm like I'm gonna stitch one I'm like no I don't but I look at them and they're so pretty and all the beads and the one on one one over one skin that you guys do and they're just like incredible beautiful beautiful and they are works of art I mean they are definitely a piece of art so she interviewed Nora and I thought that was the one of the most fascinating interviews I've seen so you have to check it out um, even if you, I mean I was incredibly interesting even if you're not Amelia Bailey Mira Bailey or Nora Corbett Stitcher um, immense amount of respect from her for her and her mom um, was the designer behind lavender and lace so um, obviously similar styles but it's just it was a really interesting really interesting I loved it um, walked away from there being like holy smokes that was cool and then um, yeah and I can't I would never have the guts to do it so kudos to you Claire anyways okay the dogs unplugged my power cord Okay, so the Jamlin kit. Here it is. You all know it. Love it. Um, Brian Blitzstitch is stitching it, and I believe Philip um, Pip Stitch, Blitzstitch, and Pip Stitch is stitching. I think he's stitching spring. There, it's so beautiful. I just, I love it. That's my start. That's a lot of blue in there. So that was that. Nothing too fancy. And I will get to um, Macintosh Mill. Sorry to disappoint for those of you who are looking forward to seeing it stitch, but I'll get to it. Um, then next, I have a Kathy Barrick design. It is, my peeps are home, in case you hear banging, clanging. Kathy Barrick. And this is called Rebecca. I had this chart. Um, Abby did help me pick out um, a Blackbird design chart and she did a little video for me and then she did one of Oliver Carriage House samplings and this was in it and I'm like oh, I have that I need to stitch it it's so cute I love the um, the variegation and the bunny I love the red I just love everything about this okay what I thought was amazing though it seems really big and the pattern to be honest, is I'm just going to show you half of the pattern back here. Like, yeah, it's a big pattern. But here's my start. <laughs> this is going to be itty bitty. Um, this is 40 count de Bloom. I think this is another, this is another piece I got from Nicole. And it is, but still, it's just, it's not, I mean, even if it were on like a 28 count, it would only be that big. It's just kind of deceiving the pattern. And um, Again, I like it, but it took me a long time to do all that because this ain't easy on those. And that's that. So looking forward to getting that one done. Um, I'm just going to do all the border and then fill in the bunny. That should be. And I think I have a color in cotton floss I believe it's called slate I can't remember now slate I believe that's what it's called and I, that one is going to be perfect for that and that's what I want to use it's in another kit here somewhere though so I have to find it okay and last one start number 28 another Kathy Barrick and this one is Strawberry Bird. I love this so much. I and I already had the pattern. Um, but after I saw that, I was like, oh my gosh, I have to stitch that. And I loved hers because she did it on, I don't know. And it, this isn't super dark fabric, but I think just the, um, the pattern itself makes it seem kind of dark. And she did hers on it looked like a flax or a platinum. This is a platinum. 
So there's my start on that. I'm just doing the outline of the bird. Cute. And I love the lighter color and how it pops on there. That's that, folks. All my starts. Um, I do have a couple of shout outs. I did shout outs a few videos ago and I just keep forgetting to do them, but I did have a lot of people that commented and said that they really liked it when I did the shout outs because I just always assume that like, if, that you've, because I've heard them so many times, but you know, you guys may not watch all the floss tubers that I watch. So, um, yeah, so I just got a lot of feedback. People, I was kind of surprised how many people said they really liked the shout outs. So I do have a couple, um, and some of them are not new anymore. And you, I mean, they might have six or seven videos and, um, but I wanted to do the Michelle's. So first, um, Michelle from Cozy Egg, I love her videos. And she has, right now, she's also doing some mania stuff. Um, she's posting regular videos. I love her projects and her samplers and her dark 13 stitching. It's very, she's kind of doing like I wanted to do for the Jane Austen. She's doing a, um, a Halloween version, which I love. And she has also had, so she's talked before about this um, storage locker that she's had. Um, and she pulled out a dollhouse that she had as a kid. And it had some damage to it, so she's they're kind of refurbing it, and then she's painting it, and she's gonna make it into like a haunted dollhouse, which I love that concept. It's super cool. So check her out. I'll post her channel below. Um, and then of course I mentioned um, Michelle Garrett Bendy Stitchy. I will post her below. She'll be already posted below. Um, I just love her. She's very interesting. She used to live in Hawaii. Um, she's into yoga and she's a hospice nurse. Um, my daughter is also a hospice nurse, so, and I'm probably old enough to be her mom. <laughs> so, oh, and she's coming, obviously I already said she's coming to the retreat, so I'm super excited about that. Okay, then Michelle at the Striped Rose, um, she's my twin. Um, we're totally twinning. We have so much in common, it's crazy. I'm no longer homeschooled, but I did homeschool. She's homeschooling. She has teenagers at home. I have teenagers at home. She's 44. I'm 44. She got married in 1997. I got married in 1998. And no, I'm not stalking her. Thanks. Take the dogs out, please. Um, she said this all on her video. Um, we have a very a similar stitching style. Um, She loves British literature and Jane Austen. I do too. And little, she tells funny stories um, kind of about her daughters and how they kind of give her a hard time with homeschooling. And my daughter did the same thing. And I actually made her read Jane Eyre. It's a little dark twist to it. So I thought she would like that. And she loved it. So she was a sophomore when I homeschooled. The last year I homeschooled her. Um, she's just finishing up her junior year. And I made her read that and every time now where she'll be like, oh, can I, I want to buy this. Can I have it? And I'm like, well, how are you going to pay that, pay for that? And she's like, I'll advertise. And that came right out of the giant thing. She's, she's hilarious. So kids, kids, kids. So anyways, um, yeah, so she's my twin. Go follow her. I will post her. And then you may be surprised because I'm going to tell you about Amanda and Pew Stitcher next. She, like, feeds my soul. That girl is, she's just amazing, has overcome so much, and has such a kind, and, um, like, her spirit just shines through. She's really interesting, and her stitching is phenoms. She's extremely witty, which I love. I love a smart, funny girl. And she's it. She is an amputee, and she'll tell her story in her videos. Please check her out. And um, and she has a dog that's an amputee too, and Sawyer, and who he was very sick, um, and he's feeling better now, which I'm very grateful for you that she's that he's doing better. So check her out. Oh, and the reason why she's on my Michelle list, her middle name's Michelle. 
I remember that. Aren't you impressed? Because I remembered that from some post way back. It stuck with me somewhere that you told me your middle name was Michelle. I'm pretty sure that was, if not, I don't, she's honorary Michelle. And then someone who's totally not a Michelle, unless your middle name is Michelle too. Um, Jen's stitching niche. Holy Hannah. Um, she's probably, I mean, she doesn't look it, but she must be 105 years old from all the stuff that she stitched because her walls are covered and I, I love her. Okay. So I, I used to be like a one whip at a time kind of girl. And last year I really branched out, um, with the year of whips challenge. And then I did start a few for mania, which was totally out of my element. And this year I'm like, just, I'm full bore. She's full bore too, and she kind of had the same epiphany that she didn't have to stitch just one thing at a time, and she now has like, I think 116, she said in her video. Crazy. I need to see everything in those baskets, and I probably want to stitch everything in those baskets. Like, beautiful. And then all the stuff on her walls. I love it. I love it all. I can't get enough of her. Um, yeah. And she's another smart cookie, too. I like smart women. I really like smart women. Smart, intelligent, articulate, and funny. Those are my, my must-haves. So anyways, I think she mentions in her video that she started, like, from August to December, she started a new project every day, which is where she got all those whips. That's what I have done on my note. She also has um, an Etsy store. So check out her Etsy store. It's jenstitchingniche.etsy.com. Um, I'll post a link below. And I think that's it. I also wanted to say a personal thank you to Tanya of Tanya's Sewing Room. I think on Etsy and Tanya's Stitching Room on YouTube. Um, she has graciously provided us with a $25, um, a voucher for her as a door prize for, um, our retreat. And I can't say thank you enough, Tanya. You're always so sweet and so generous, incredibly generous in giving. So thanks for that. And my family is home now, so I'm going to start cooking because my daughter and my grandbabies are over. And then I will hopefully, um, it'll probably actually be a couple weeks now because quite honestly, I'm... I'm sure you're sick of seeing me. I'm sick of doing videos and I just want to get some of this stuff stitched. So I will see you in a couple weeks. Thanks for watching. Bye. Mo. Mo effective. Are you not chill? There's the boys. And we have all the girls out here today and the babies because the boys are actually better behaved and more mild tempered. And you can see my girls way out there. And if I tried to put the babies in with them, they'd probably kill them. And you can see the boys are pretty chill. They don't care. Hard to tell by the size of the grass, but he's about 300 pounds. Mo. And here he is next to one of his daughters. Hi, hey, big guy. You got some good noms? What are you doing? Give me a bump.